Good morning, and welcome to this morning's session, IDF and You. My name is Brian Fitzek. I am IDF's Associate VP of Community Services, and will be the moderator for this morning's ses session. Um, a few housekeeping instructions before we uh, get into the presentations. A quick disclaimer that you may now be familiar with um, if you've attended some of our other sessions, so I won't read through it, but most importantly, information presented during this event is not medical advice. Always seek the advice of a qualified health provider concerning a medical condition. Although we won't really be addressing medical issues in this session, but more things about IDF. Um, if you have any questions for our presenters during the session, please submit them via the question box that is located on the bottom of your screen. Um, these questions will be answered at the end of the session with time permitting. So, as you know, the title of the session is IDF and You, not IDF Programs and Services. And this was a deliberate move to convey IDF's approach to the community. I think it captures the essence of our organization's focus, which is you, our community. Our strength lies well beyond the board members and the staff. Our power lies in the engagement of those individuals that we serve and bringing them together. Why? Well, I think the old adage, if you wanna go farther, go together, rings true here. Bringing people together to plan and execute change is critical. That is why you, is so important to us. When individuals come together to help identify problems and strategies to address them, it increases the ability for real change. So IDF is more than just delivering programs to your doorstep or computer screen these days. IDF is about connections. This is a powerful word whether it's connecting with individuals to information, connecting individuals with each other, or connecting individuals for a cause. Great things can happen when that synergy between an organization's staff and the constituents it serves occurs. Um, so this morning, we're going to hear from a few folks at IDF about this theme of connections and the power of you in our programs. Um, first on our agenda is Tammy Black, who is IDF's Vice President of Communications. Tammy? Thanks, Brian. I appreciate the introduction, and you're so right. I couldn't agree more. Um, connections are really, really powerful. Because 2020 has been such an unprecedented year for all of us, we've, we've been connecting virtually more than ever, and this weekend's a great example of that. Early on in the pandemic, our communications team and the entire team at IDF made a conscious decision to spend as much time listening online as we do talking. Because conversations and learning, they really can only happen when both sides of the conversation are engaged. And I hope you find that to be true and you find that our online platforms are places of true connection. There are a lot of places you can join us, so I wanted to let all of you know about them and make sure that you're taking advantage of every available opportunity. One is IDF Friends, and it can be accessed directly from our website. And it's a safe place for you to talk to others about your own PI experience. Obviously on social media, we're really active. We post regularly on Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook, but there are also private Facebook groups where you that are divided from various diagnoses. So you can talk to people that have very similar experiences to, your, to yourself. And then the other way that we love to be able to connect is for you to directly tell us your story so that we can share it with a larger community. And you can do that in two ways. You can do that through Real Stories, which is a video platform. You can take a video of yourself on your phone, on your computer, and you can upload it to our website. And we will edit it and share it on YouTube and social media. And the other way, if you're not so comfortable with a video and you want to tell your story in words or pictures, we have an email address set up. It's stories at Primary Immune. And email us, and we'll have a conversation and figure out the best way that we can share that. Uh, next. The, the next thing I want to talk about, and you probably hear all of us talk about this an awful lot, um, is IDF My Account. It really is the way that we know how to send information to you that you may want. You probably already know that it's the only way that you can register for events like the summit this weekend. 
Um, but there's also an opportunity when you go in there to let us know exactly what information you want to receive and how often you want to receive it. Um, we have text alerts now, which is new as of the last few months. So if you aren't already subscribed, please make sure you do so. You can check the frequency of your emails. You can download resources. You can ask questions via Ask IDF about your insurance, about um, all kinds of things. So I hope that you take advantage. And as we move into 2021, you'll find that we're gonna have even more programming that's targeted to your particular diagnosis, to certain age groups and to particular interests. So letting us know a little more about yourself is the best way to make sure that you don't miss out on any of those opportunities. Um, you may already know this, but if you don't, I feel like it's my job to tell you every day, you are IDS strongest advocate. Um, there may be nobody else in your friends and family's world that's a zebra that has PI except you. So you're the face of PI. And um, that's, that's the only way that we are ever gonna be able to get the message out about IDF is for, is for you to tell them. It's, it's a real opportunity to share an important message. Um, and another stat that you probably hear a lot because you're already PI advocates um, is that there's an estimated quarter million Americans with a primary immunodeficiency and only a fraction of them are aware of the resources available to them for IDF. And even more individuals go undiagnosed. So imagine if every single one of them, everybody you knew, asked their physicians about recurring infections and asked to be te tested appropriately. Just that simple awareness could improve diagnosis and treatment and could even be life-saving for so many people. So raise your voice and tell everybody you know to think zebra. The other thing that we've launched this year that we're really proud of is Plasma Hero. It's a new initiative to raise awareness for plasma donations um, beyond just even the PI community. We want, we want this to be a broad, broad campaign. And we did create a video promoting it, and I want to show you that today. The Immune Deficiency Foundation, or IDF, is committed to increasing plasma donation and awareness. With the help of our latest initiative, Plasma Hero, it is our hope to inspire more people to donate plasma and become heroes. The Plasma Hero website is chock full of information to help your friends and family members save lives, including what it takes to become a plasma donor, how to find a donation center, and meeting others who are working on building plasma awareness. Hear from Plasma Heroes Aubrey and Jonathan Conley, who are spreading awareness about plasma donation after their daughter Ava was diagnosed with a PI. We just went and did our first donation um, for Ava and any other kids or adults that need this. If it could change the life of our daughter, then obviously it could be changing the lives of other people's daughters and other people's sons that are out there. So um, I, th I think the bigger meaning is, is what this can actually do as far as saving lives. I have an immune deficiency. Not a lot of people are donating plasma. Um, so. Plasma keeps me healthy, and I need people to donate plasma to stay healthy. So please donate plasma. I need it to keep me healthy. Learn more about donating plasma and becoming a hero at www.plasmahero.org. Hey, um, I hope you enjoyed that video. It is all over social media. And so we'd love for you to share it with your own friends and family. Um, it, as a quick summary, I just hope that what you can take away from our session today it, it, from a whole is that we're listening to you and we wanna hear what you have to say, that you're in control, you're driving this car to our future and that you are a really, really powerful voice in the community. Um, probably should have just started and ended with that. Thank you. Cool. Thank you so much, Tammy. Um, we will next hear from Hector Garcia, who is IDF's Executive Vice President of Programs and Services. Hector? Thank you, Brian, and uh, thank you, Tammy. Uh, uh, tough act to follow. Uh, uh, we're all a team, and uh, we're all here today uh, to uh, emphasize you know, the power of, of our community, which is you. IDF mission statement is centered on fostering community. Uh, and the I in IDF also represents inclusion, integrity, innovation, and especially an incredible group of staff and volunteers 
and partners that stand ready to provide you with the tools to improve your quality of life. But it's really important that you know that you, our PI community, you are the most powerful tool this organization has in its toolbox. Think of how easy it is to flip a switch at home and for the light in the room to come on, right? We don't often think about all that needs to be in place for that to happen, the cables, the wires in the home, for that one light to come on. I want you to think of yourselves as the electricity, as a power source that makes your IDF what it is today and what it can be in years to come. We'll take care of the wiring. Oh, that's no problem. We wanna be your home away from home with enough lights to help you have a brighter and better life. Our goal is that no matter where you are, who you are, or your diagnosis, you will have access to everything that IDF can provide for you. We have the dedicated and passionate staff to do so, but remember you are our fuel and you are our source, our, um, our source of energy. As such a powerful PI community, we need your input, we need your ideas, we need your support, we need your engagement. We know you are compassionate, strong, generous, and resilient and full of resolve as we have seen in the last six months. We also have experienced all your help and support for the last four years as uh, when this organization was founded. So don't ever forget that you are IDF and how much we need you. As you can see during the last eight months uh, and during this socially distance year, it's easy to feel isolated. But even though we are apart, uh, we have been united through different means and today it is you know, technology. And that's how we are able to bring our community together. In 2020, in the last eight months, we've had over 37 forums. Uh, we probably will end up the year with about 45. Uh, and those happen virtually. Uh, we have reached uh, over 35, over 3,400 participating households and an estimated uh, number of participants that it's close to 4,000. That is more than double the amount of individuals we were able to reach last year. We also have our Get Connected groups. Uh, we've had 144 meetings. That has tripled the amount of meetings and registrations and individual participants you know, from last year. And our volunteers, we have close to 500 of them. That's, uh, that's you folks helping us, you know, fulfill our mission. So why is community involvement so critical? Uh, your community engagement leads us to improve outcomes. Establishing longstanding effective partnerships, partnerships with you, the results are greater and the sense of ownership and improved programs and services that are tailored to the unique needs of our PI community. At IDF, we're committed to reaching out and making an impact in our PI community. And it's part of our mission to simply do what we do best, even though there's a lot more to be done. We can't do this without you. So please continue to stay present in our activities, participate, raise your hand, you know, answer our surveys, and together we will move forward. I hope so far you have enjoyed our summit and please continue to stay with us during the day. Thank you. Thank you so much, Hector. Um, and don't forget to send your questions over so they can be answered. Um, and so our final speaker is Marcy Chang, IDF Vice President of Institutional Advancement. Marcy? Hi, and welcome everybody. We're glad you joined us. Um, Hector, Tammy, and I have uh, looked forward to giving you a little bit of a preview of what we do behind the scenes, as, as well as what we're doing in front and involving you. Um, as 
I have a long title. Pretty much it means fundraiser. So I am the lead fundraiser. Um, I have a great team that I work with who brings lots of different opportunities to our PI community to participate in, to raise funds, and not only funds, but awareness for IDF. So one that a lot of our um, community has participated in, but there's still room for more of you and growth is the IDF, IDF Walk for PI. The season kicked off in late August, and we are nearing the end, um, but there is still room and time for many of you to be involved. Now, this year, as you all know, we have gone virtual completely. And while at first virtual seemed like there was a lot of obstacles, what we have found is with the walk, just like Hector in the program, I mean, we can open these up to everyone everywhere. You don't have to live by a major city. You can be in a rural area. You can be anywhere around the world and still participate virtually. So the walks are where you make them, whether it be your neighborhood, a local park. It's just opened a lot of doors and there is still time. We um, have set up our walks in what we call clusters and we have one more cluster coming on November 14th and you can be anywhere you if you go to the walk for PI website you'll see some of the locations listed are like LA Orange County kind of our west coast circle but that doesn't mean you have to be from the west coast you can be from anywhere you can join one of those groups if you'd like or you can join virtually wherever you are and be a part of that walk celebration on November 14th, where we have a lot of fun. We have a pep rally, there's music, there's inspirational videos. And then after we pep you up, we send you out to walk and we ask you to post your walk and your experience on social media to inspire others. Because while we are fundraising, we are also raising awareness. And what a better way to get out to your community than in a walk. And then if you happen to already be busy, November 14th, we are doing a year-end walk celebration on December 15th. You do not have to have registered for a walk. This is open to everybody. If you go to the event section on our website, you'll see an opportunity to register for the walk celebration. It's an hour long event where we will celebrate uh, the walk season. There'll be live music. We'll send out um, fun games ahead of time. We'll take some uh, opportunities to play some games online and just have a great season uh, celebration. We kicked it off in a fun way in August and we'll wrap it up with a celebration on December 15th. While it's very important part of the walks is to raise awareness, it is also to raise funds for IDF and IDF uses those funds to um, push out research. So over the years, we have raised a lot of money to direct research to helping the PI community. So we invite you to jump on board, register, sign up as an individual or involve your community, your family, your friends, get out there and walk and, and celebrate IDF and the PI community. Something that we have launched recently, and I invite you all to go to our website and visit um, ways to give is our DIY fundraising. So a lot of you I'm sure are familiar with the DIY network on your cable station, and maybe you have a lot of fun uh, watching what they're doing there, but we also have a DIY fundraising website which offers a lot of opportunities for those of you who want to do something different. Our goal at um, IDF is to provide a vast array of opportunities for you all to be involved. The DIY fundraising allows you to tailor an event exclusively how you want to celebrate. So a few ways that we encourage people to get involved in the fun is to celebrate. Do you have a birthday like IDF, which I'll talk about shortly coming up? And instead of gifts, you want to encourage your um, friends and family to donate to IDF. We have the um, capability for you to set up your own fundraising celebration page on the DIY uh, platform. And you can fundraise and ask for gifts of donations instead of presents. And this is really um, an awesome way for you to celebrate your birthday during COVID when we can't always be with our friends and family, you can do it virtually and celebrate. So there's birthdays, there's anniversaries. If you go to the website and you scroll to the bottom, 
you'll see some of the events that other people are doing. We have one family that in, at their they were having their bar mitzvah, and instead of asking for gifts, they asked for donations, and they've raised eight hundred and thirty dollars through celebrating their child's bar mitzvah online. So that's pretty awesome. There's also an opportunity to get active. Maybe during this COVID time, you're looking for ways to get out there and get active, whether it's yoga, spin classes, golf, kickballs become very um, popular. These are all fun ways to get active, but yet raise funds and awareness for IDF. We have some people that have gotten very creative. Um, Kim Spies has made kindness rocks and she has a plat uh, website on ours and she's raised so far $430 with her kindness rocks. So not only is she raising funds, but she's raising awareness and she's doing something really nice for our community. So I encourage you to go to the DIY, peruse around. We have several categories from celebrate, get active, be creative. There's always ideas that we share with you, but there's also ideas at the bottom of the page that tell you what other people are doing. And as we head into the holiday season, no better time than to celebrate and find ways to support IDF. Um, I just encourage you to go there and explore and have a little fun with it. So those of you that have joined us today are the lucky ones because you're getting a little sneak preview at what is coming your way. IDF is celebrating its 40th and we're calling it birthday, but it'll probably stretch into an anniversary and last all year long because we like to celebrate what we've done. We like to celebrate our community. This is a little sneak preview of what you will be getting in the mail shortly. It's an opportunity to celebrate our 40th birthday um, in zebra style. We're going to have a lot of fun. We have a lot of um, activities planned. I encourage you when you see this week, probably, maybe our, our further out on our West Coast friends will be a little further along. But when you see that piece of mail come from IDF this week, open it up because there's some pretty special things in there, including an IDF birthday card. Um, we're looking for our community to help us celebrate this 40th birthday in zebra style, full of lots of fun and opportunity. And we're going to give you some ideas in this package of ways to celebrate with us. You'll see here, it's a fun celebrate with IDF, 40 ways to celebrate 40 years. And there are so many opportunities on here. It's not all about funds, although as a fundraiser, I always like it to be about fundraising, but you have lots of ideas. We give you every day of the month of November and into December, ways and ideas to celebrate our birthday. From what Tammy had shared earlier to being a plasma donor and joining the plat and being a plasma hero uh, to donating $40 for 40 years, celebrating our 40th birthday. Um, maybe we give you opportunity to share your journey as well as read other people's journeys. And we also are giving you an opportunity to send IDF a birthday message. Now you may have seen on our social media last week, we encourage people to start celebrating with us a little bit early, which is pretty awesome. And we put out a social media post to write a birthday message to IDF. And we were, I wanna say overwhelmed, but overwhelmed in an awesome way. By your response, the birthday messages flooded in and we'll be posting those online. We'll be sharing them with our community. And we just invite you to look at this calendar that will be coming your way. And it will also be online um, and look for ways that work for you. We also have Giving Tuesday coming up, which is an annual day of giving. And we encourage our community to participate in our Giving Tuesday projects. What's pretty awesome is we have some pretty cool zebra um, masks for you to wear when you're out and about. And the uh, a so many number of our donors to Giving Tuesday will be given a zebra mask. So look for ways to be involved on this calendar. We really want you to celebrate with us. We've provided a lot of opportunities, but we're also always welcoming ideas for our community. As we look um, to the future of IDF, we want to be able to provide everything that we do to you 
through our educational resources, whether they be at our forums or they're online or they're at great, awesome summits like you're attending this weekend. But we can't do it alone. We have to have a community that supports us. And we look to each of you to find what works for you. If you're a walker, there's the walks. If you're a, um, someone who likes to share your story and encourage your friends to join you, we encourage that. Another great way is a Facebook fundraiser, easy to set up and the perfect way for you to put it out there to raise funds and awareness for IDF. So I encourage you to jump on our website, open your mail this week. Don't let it sit in that stack that we all like to sit our mail in and join us as we celebrate IDF. Thank you. Thank you so much, Marcy. That was an awesome introduction from everybody into IDF. Um, so, you know, going back to the theme of community, it's, it's absolutely important to have a community throughout this journey. That feeling of belonging and shared experiences has a big influence on our families' lives. And, you know, just as um, plants are more likely to thrive in a garden with good soil and plenty of sunlight and water, our families are more likely to thrive in nurturing communities as well. And as our community increases, our collective voice grows. And so we can't do it alone. We do need you and our current community members um, to spread that word. Um, there are several ways um, that you can help out uh, to expand our herd. And as you can see here, you know, invite others to the idea of programs and events um, that you might uh, be in contact with. You know, sharing those messages on social media, as Tammy pointed out, um, encouraging others to donate plasma, as Tammy was talking about with the plasma program, and, and tell every, everyone uh, about Think Zebra. Um, so we have a few questions uh, from the audience. Um, the ones we have a few, we have ones that are dealing with IDF friends. So I think these will go to you, Tammy. Um, if you can tell uh, the folks a little bit about how to join IDF friends. Sure, absolutely. There is when you visit the primaryimmune.org website. There is a page just for IDF friends, and you can log on from that page. And I saw a question below about notifications, Brian. If you want me to take that while I'm on the friends. Sure. What? Um, we are in the midst and in early 2021, we'll be continuing to make improvements to the forum itself. So one of the questions that um, I believe Deborah asked was um, that she's not getting notifications correctly. Know that we're on it and we're looking into it and, and early, we should be able to figure that out pretty soon. So I wanted to answer that while we were talking about IDF friends, but you can sign up directly from the IDF website. Cool, terrific. Um, and then um, this one would be for you, Marcy, um, but um, this individual enjoys the walks and enjoys the community that is in the in-person walks. And can you tell us a little bit about what the plans might be for 2021? Uh, will the plans, um, will the walks remain virtual or will they be in person eventually or blend? That is a great question. And you should all know that I come from the walk world. I am a walk world cheerleader. Um, I am always trying, I tried to preserve 2020 if I could, as long as I could until I finally had to um, make the right decision and go virtual. So as we look to 2021, it will most likely, Brian, be a combination. Um, we have to consider so many factors, not only the health and safety of our community and um, their well-being, but we also work with permits and counties and um, cities that aren't allowing uh, events to happen in their parks and their communities, or they're saying, oh, instead of 200 people, you can have 20. So as we look to 2021, uh, it will be a mix of virtual and there'll be some opportunities. We have some great ideas. Um, I'll, I'll let one slip out here, um, including an event in a box where you'll be able to um, get your own 
walk kit. And if your community and your park is permitting um, events and gatherings, you'll be able to take your walk in your box, which will have shirts and swag and fun things like that, and do a, do your walk still, but in your community. And then as well as we will still have our virtual. So we're really looking for ways to weave it, to connect it. Um, we don't have that glass ball that tells us what it's gonna look like next fall. I wish we did. Um, because if it said we're clear, I would be like, John, we're doing it. But um, I would say 2021, look for a mix and look for new opportunities. Cool, thank you, Tammy. Um, Hector, I think this one will be for you and it's sort of in the same vein. Um, this individual um, actually uh, likes the online programming, does not have access to some of the uh, in-person programming, and wondering what the plans might be for the future uh, with educational programs and Get Connected groups uh, being offered virtually versus in person. Yes, so uh, so like Marcy said, uh, our priority it's uh, it's to keep everybody safe, uh, not only our community but uh, also our staff. Uh, and to be able to provide, you know, timely uh, information, you know, education as consistently uh, as we can. Uh, the way to do that in uh, in what we, you know, what we call our new normal, which is becoming, you know, the normal, uh, it's through uh, virtual programming. Uh, uh, our our plans are to be able to expand our virtual programming uh, uh, besides, you know, education. Uh, and information, uh, sometimes to even add a, a little fun to it, uh, uh, make it more consistent, uh, allow people to plan ahead of time, uh, uh, you know, which ones they want to join. And uh, also the main thing, like I said in, uh, in our presentation, it's uh, to be able to continue to gain input. I think that's, that's our direction. Our direction is to gain your input uh, gain uh, 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 information uh, so that we can, you know, develop programs, you know, that match what our PI community needs. Uh, and so far, uh, we will continue uh, uh, to perform uh, our duties uh, virtually. Uh, we'll look forward to the day that, uh, you know, some of this might change and, you know, maybe there's a hybrid uh, type of approach uh, uh, to the way uh, we conduct our business. Uh, but Brian, uh, when it comes to Get Connected groups, uh, I am going to actually turn it back to you uh, since uh, you are the one leading that effort. Uh, uh, the growth of the Get Connected groups has been, you know, incredible. So uh, this is uh, this is your two minutes of so being able to answer a question also. Uh, terrific. Um, so as Hector pointed out, we have over 30 Get Connected groups and they moved all virtually <clears throat> at the beginning of April. And um, part of the expansion, I believe, you know, for the numbers of tripling the numbers from last year is due in part to uh, more available access to the community. Um, so I think what I will do is, is as, as the pandemic settles down and uh, life begins returning to some in-person programming, you know, really looking at the community and their needs. Um, I would imagine that it's going to be probably a blend of um, of in-person and virtual. The virtual programming has actually allowed us to expand our footprint into areas that we normally would not be able to, such as diagnosis-specific programming. Um, obviously, you know, in a geographic area, if you're limited, there's only a certain number of folks that might have a specific diagnosis. But when you open it up nationwide, uh, you can really bring and build that community. So there, there certainly will be the diagnosis-specific programming we have programming now for um, mothers in Illinois, um, which you know have some unique needs and concerns. Um, and so I think that type of programming will continue to occur um, online. There'll probably be some of the Get Connected group leaders will want to move back into in-person. Um, and so we will look at those locations and try to decide um, if we'll offer uh, an online program for those that can't make it. Um, so that's probably the plans when it comes to the Get Connected groups. 
Um, so, Tammy, this could be you. Um, I work at a local college, and we have a CSL plasma donation um, center locally. How can I promote donation um, for the specific location to students? Uh, I am not on social media at all. And um, so might you uh, have a couple hints for her? Yeah, that's an amazing question. And um, we have lots and lots of materials that I could email you. If is Brian, are there email addresses in this chat with the questions? Is that correct? Yes. Great. So we have posters that you can hang up that I could send to you. We have all kinds of information that I can send you that is not just based on social media. And um, Marcy's teased some things, so I'll tease some things as well. Um, for Giving Tuesday, in addition to obviously promoting a donation to IDF for Giving Tuesday, we're also promoting for uh, people to donate plasma on Giving Tuesday as well. So um, I will say a lot of that is on social media, but telling your friends and family to do that would be wonderful. So um, I will grab your email address from these questions and answers, and I'll send you out some information this week. Great. Thank you. Um, Marcy, uh, this one is for you. Um, because the coast to coast walk indicated August 22nd, I thought that was the start date. So I created a team under San Antonio. Is there a way to relocate the team to the coast to coast one or does it not matter? Great question. Um, I'm glad that you registered and picked San Antonio. It must sound like a fun city for you to walk in. So you are more than welcome to stay within the San Antonio, the um, platform and your donations still count. Uh, the fun thing about staying within the San Antonio cluster, you're gonna get some great emails about the pep rally. But if you prefer, we can move you over to virtual. And on the walk site, there is that virtual button. So if you would prefer to be moved to virtual, please just email development at primary, at, now I'm having a brain freeze here, mm -hmm. um, at primaryimmune.org and we will um, have the team switch you over. So it's really whatever you prefer. Um, like I said, you can pick a city that you like, there's room for everybody and you can participate virtually in either space. And your donations all go to the same place um, in the end anyway. So it goes to one big pot. So if you want to be a San Antonian for a weekend, have a little fun and be a San Antonio. Put on your cowboy hat and maybe your cowboy boots and walk in the neighborhood like that. So you're welcome to join either way. And if you have any questions, um, please email me directly or um, the, the development email as well. Thank you, Marcy. Um, Hector, this one is for you. Um, how do you decide on topics for educational forums? Is there a way for members of the community to provide input into topics? Uh, yes, uh, and uh, uh, that's a great, great question. Uh, uh, we have we not only uh, provide surveys uh, uh, after each forum, uh, and now our forums are national. So I I, I, I want to stress the fact that when we have an educational forum the entire country uh, it's able to participate. In fact, we have been able to cover all 50 states and we actually have had several countries that have joined. So we gather questions you know, from each forum uh, that presenters answer, um, um, uh, questions that are not answered uh, at that time because forums are limited, are an hour and, and uh, 30 minutes. Uh, those questions are gather gathered the presenter is asked, and then we go back to our audience and we, uh, we're able to answer those questions. We also provide a survey uh, that actually asks uh, our participants, you know, uh, besides, you know, how they enjoy the forum or any other questions for suggestions for other topics. Those topics are ranked, I'm not gonna say similar to our leaderboard uh, for this event, uh, but they are ranked in such a way that then we are able uh, to communicate with presenters, establish a schedule, and provide our community with uh, what they've asked for. And we really, that's when, let me say it again, that's where we really, really appreciate input. Uh, and when we really need, you know, our community to uh, understand that uh, uh, we can't do this, you know, without you. Uh, uh, this is, uh, this is, you know, an incredible task uh, uh, in terms of uh, the last, you know, five, six months, 
Uh, and it's all happened because of the support we received from our community. So, you know, keep keep doing it. You know, Sivra strong. Thank you, Hector. Um, a great suggestion here, uh, Tammy, to get on. Um, uh, ever think about trying to get on the Dr. Oz or the Doctor Show to get the word out about PI? So I thought that would be that Rest is in. a great suggestion. We are happy to get on any TV show that ever wants to have us. So I'll throw a pitch out here that if you have media contact somewhere, local media is also very powerful, send them our way because we, we love to uh, get our story told whenever we can. Gotcha. Uh, Marcy, uh, this one would be for you. It's from the same person. Um, they, were, they were just asking about some clarifications for the walk. Um, and it, that it would help IDF to know what IDF uses the walk funds for before, when they ask people to donate? Great question. And this is one of um, the disadvantages of not getting together when we would be able to share a lot of this information at the walk. But um, if you go to the walk website, you'll see that we use um, that the funds raised to fund our research program. Um, and there is a list of projects that we uh, fund every year. So I think it's very important as the question um, was asked that we share with our community that it's going to valuable research to help our PI community directly. Um, we do put that information, like I said, on the website. And there is, <clears throat> if you go to the top of the uh, walk website, there are little icons that you can pull down and you can find one that says, how does my, how is my donation helping? And there's a whole list of ways that your donation is making a direct impact. Cool, thank you. Um, and then another suggestion for um, for the donations and fundraising. Uh, it would be great if there was a pamphlet that explained what PI is and is not contagious. The last section could have a form that people could fill out and donate funds. We could give this to doctors, friends, and family. It would inform people about what we have, <clears throat> um, but also about the fundraising. And you know, I just want to say that this is exactly what this forms about and what IDF is about is providing these types of suggestions. Um, you know, some suggestions get traction, some don't. But you know, the, the the synergy that we get from the ideas in the community really help to drive um, our programming and our plans as we move forward. Um, so let's see. Um, we have just. Um, uh, another uh, suggestion from somebody is, you know, choosing another city to do a walk is a great way to have people take a vacation uh, by selecting another city. Um, so I think that's, I think that's an awesome idea. You yeah. take a virtual vacation and do your virtual walk and um, get to know the people from that community as well. So I think it's an awesome opportunity. Yep. And another suggestion, um, these people, you guys are great. Um, are you on Amazon Smile charity list? People can shop on Amazon Smile and a percentage of their order will go to IBF. We are. And recently, I believe, Tammy, we had a social media post about it, as well as how to um, connect with our Amazon Smiles. So please look us up on Amazon Smiles. Uh, recently, we encouraged you all to support us during the Prime Days. That was an awesome way as well. So yes, we are on Amazon Smiles, and we encourage all of our community to uh, pick us as your favorite and uh, support us that way. And it might and, uh, just be one of the 40 knowing ways. That, knowing that we have a birthday, uh, any of you that have a birthday and would like to uh, celebrate your birthday by creating a fundraiser on social media, uh, for IDF, uh, please uh, feel free to do so. That will yep, also it's on the DIY page. You can do that. And Tammy, I think you were going to say it's on the calendar as well. It is. That's exactly what I was going to say. Yes, it's one of the 40 ways to celebrate IDF's 40th birthday is to add IDF to your Amazon Smile account. You guys are cool. so smart. You're a smart uh -huh. community. Yes, thank you so much. We are coming to the end of this program session, uh, but I want to just thank everybody for joining us this morning. And hopefully we um, gave you the ability to see a different way of looking at IDF, um, you know, because only together can we ultimately empower everyone in our community um, to live their life 
fully. Um, so this brings us to the end of this session of the day, um, but we have an informative final day plan for you. Um, our next breakout sessions will begin at 11 a.m. Eastern time uh, and sessions will run until 11.45. Um, the final keynote presented by the Plasma Protein Therapeutics Association uh, from noon to 12.45. And then we will have closing remarks, which will be delivered by um, uh, IDF President and CEO John Boyle, uh, who will explore the good, the challenging, and the unknown as we march forward into the future together as a united community. So thank you so much, and we will see you all again soon.